Hello everyone, Happy New Year. Today is December 31st, 2013, but chances are you're viewing this obviously in 2014 because you haven't seen this video yet. So, I know many of you have received new gifts and a lot of them happen to be running Windows 8. Whee! So, it's actually running Windows 8.1 if you have received the new laptop, hopefully. And it's probably confusing for some people to learn how to use. Now, I have made a video in the past on how to use Windows 8, and that actually took off pretty well. But today we're going to be talking about how to really use Windows 8 quickly, or Windows 8.1 quickly, or learn how to maneuver through the environment of Windows 8 without having it be a pain. And this is going to be a nice quick video, not a 30 minute long video on how to do it, but we're going to talk about Windows 8.1 and what's really different between 8.1 and 8. And that's, it's not too challenging, but I'd like to actually make it easy for you guys to actually, or anyone to use. So to start off with, as you can see, I am actually in what is called the desktop mode. And that is a mode that you can actually now get into when you start it up. And I can show you how to do that as well. However, this mode is mostly what you're going to use if you own a desktop PC or a laptop, traditional laptop PC. So what they've introduced with Windows 8.1 is some new features that kind of tackle on what people have been complaining about. I myself am happy that they have the start button back somewhat because it's nice to know where you're clicking to get back to the Metro interface. Yes, I said Metro interface. That means, or whatever they call it now, that means that when I click on this, I am brought back into our Metro interface, which we all hate or love depends on who you are but they have added this button back to it which is nice uh, to get to what you're looking for so what's really nice what I like that they've added back to it is and this will make it easier for everybody to use if you right click on this they actually have a shutdown or sign out option so instead of having to go to the right click on the settings tab power shut down restart you can actually click on this button and right uh, right click on this button and actually be able to hit shut down or sign out and that's that's something I'm very happy for it's the little things that count and again Windows 8.1 is a free update to Windows 8 so and they've added some stuff with command prompt and it's pretty much the what I like about it is that they've added that shutdown um, they've also changed the way you get your application so if you click on here Maneuvering through your applications is much easier now. You can just click that little tab and you'll see all your apps right here. If you ask me, it's kind of reminiscent of the start menu. The fact that you can just click this. And look, there it is. Or, my personal favorite, what you can do is you can actually click on this start button on your, uh, on your either tablet or keyboard and start typing the application you're looking for, for example. So that's that's a really nice change that they've added. So if you click on the button itself and hover over down, you can actually quickly gain access to your apps. Or if you have a tablet, you can actually swipe down, which is really up. Uh, but yeah, if you swipe up, meaning like this, you can actually get access to your apps really quickly. And I think it's kind of nice. And what's really nice about Windows 8.1 is the fact that you can easily look at all your apps and then easily let's say if you want to pin something like in my case I want to put um, let's say OneNote I can actually right click on it and pin to the start and there I am I can also say if I want to pin to the taskbar too which is really nice so that taskbar again is under the desktop and now as you can see it's pinned right there so they've added a screen to it but now at least you can click down here and gain access to all your apps like you would with Windows 8 I mean Windows 7 so that, that's pretty nice they've that's that makes life a little bit easier to navigate now the biggest thing for Windows and I've learned this just by myself is using something called keyboard shortcuts ways to get into programs or applications or even um, folders or Windows Explorer without having to physically click on the start menu type in Explorer and hit enter there are some wonderful keyboard shortcuts I will put in this description so you can learn how to use Windows 8. But my first personal favorite is Windows E. The Windows key and E actually brings up the Windows Explorer. So again, Windows key and E, it'll bring that up. And that's really nice because obviously 
uh, instead of having to click from where you are or anywhere, even if you're in a Metro app, for example, let's go into weather, anytime we press Windows E, it'll get you out of the Metro app and it will get you back onto the desktop. So that's Windows key and E, both pressed at the same time, that will get you to what you're looking for. Now there's a really cool one that I like to access my control panel. Um, there's probably some easier ones out there. There are many keyboard shortcuts, but I'm just showing you um, one quick way to get access to your control panel. So if you do Windows Pause Break, and you can just click on the control panel home, I'm sure there's some other shortcut out there that'll get you directly into control panel. If you guys want to put that in a comment, I would like to collect, basically make the info section a easy to access look at what for references on how to maneuver Windows. It's actually nice to use Windows E. It's really quick, and it also works on Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows Vista, all the etc. Um, do that. So that's really nice. I, I like that feature as far as if you press Windows Pause Break, you can click on Control Panel and get to your home. You can also get to Device Manager. And here's another thing for IT admins who are probably not watching this, but if you know an IT admin and you want to act smart, you can say, um, if you want to join to the Windows domain, tell them they can click on Windows Pause Break, and they'll know what you mean, and they'll like it a lot, because normally you'd have to do something different to join to a domain, and they'll know what you're talking about to get to the system information panel. It's also a quick way to let you know how much memory you have, how much, uh, what type of operating system, what type of processor, so it gives you all this, and if it's activated, obviously, so that's, that's very nice. Um, actually, and I never thought of this. <laughs> Change settings will get you access to the domain, but that's another story. Anyways, so this is a really nice quick panel to get access to your system. You can also right-click here and click on System. That'll be there as well, but that's a nice shortcut. Another really cool one I like, and this will, this will help out in general, is Windows D. And what that'll do is no matter where you are, even if you're in a Metro app, you could actually get into your desktop without having to do anything. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a few little programs here and there. Don't be confused at this, but this is a program. Just go with it. And this is a program. So I have all these programs open, but what if I just, you know, and let's say I even have this. Well, all this stuff is blocking my access to my desktop, and if I really want to go to the desktop, I can actually click on, on the keyboard, Windows D. And that will get me right back to the desktop. I can also hit Windows D again to get my pop-up of all my stuff again. So you can toggle Windows D to go to the desktop, and you can do it again to get all of your other applications open, which I find very nice. That's a nice way to maneuver through it. Now, here's another cool thing you can actually do. Let's say you have a shortcut here, and you want to easily access it. Now, I know this, all of these keyboard shortcuts that I'm showing you exist in the past. I'm not I'm not disacknowledging this. I'm just saying to work through Windows 8, if you know keyboard shortcuts, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. So you can actually create a keyboard shortcut by right clicking on the shortcut on the desktop and then if you go into shortcut key right here, I can go ahead and I can click for example if I want control alt or if I want um, let's say control shift I can also say if I want to press Control Shift 2, right, and I hit Apply, hit Continue, I am an administrator. If I press Control Shift 2, that'll open up my program. So if you want to have little shortcuts for your programs on your on your keyboard, if you can remember them or, or type them down somewhere, that's a really cool way to do it. Control Shift 2, again, will open up that that application that I have assigned. I can also have... For example, if I wanted, let's say, Spotify. If I wanted Spotify to be another shortcut key, I can also say Control Shift 3. Oops. So if I press Control Shift 3, it'll open that up. So that's a really cool way to maneuver through Windows in general. I don't use shortcut keys as much as I should, and I really, really am going to be looking into using a lot of shortcut keys with Windows 8.1. So that's part of it. And there's another thing that I like to add to the Windows R key. If you remember the start run, that's how you can get into run or just right click and say run. 
So that'll get you into run. And then there's other things, there's other shortcuts that I could go over. But um, you, for example, if you just want to type in notepad, that'll get a notepad. And then again, you could hit the Windows key and type in notepad, and that'll open up notepad as well. So it's not necessarily the hardest thing to use. It's just you've got to learn how to use keyboard shortcuts with Windows 8. And I know some people are going to say, well, uh, I don't want to use keyboard shortcuts with Windows 8. I, it's a pain. I should be able to do this the way it is. Yeah, you're right. I'm not disacknowledging this, but I'm just saying if you would like to use Windows 8.1 for your tablet, and I think it makes a good tablet operating system still, but if you'd like to use it just in general and because of the security and it actually plays games somewhat better, I can't really prove it 100%, but if you would prefer to use Windows 8 because it's what we Microsoft calls the future, you can get around it and still be able to use it like you normally would a regular desktop. People often ask me, how can you use this thing? Well, it's not that hard. I just, I've learned another way to use it. And I don't really mind it. Some people will. So if you do mind it, then use Windows 7. But I mean, there's a lot of features that are still in Windows 8 that were in 7. And they've added some stuff for tablets too, which I like personally. So another thing like it that will make your life easier is when you start the computer up you can actually have it go to the desktop so if I actually type in startup and click on change advanced startup options this will open up in the and it should actually be maybe even simpler than that I believe it's under Let's see here. I haven't done this too often. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and find out exactly where it is. If only I knew the shortcut to pause the video. <laughs> All right. Whoops. Here's a jump cut. So I'm giving credit to PC Magazine to show me actually where it, where it is. It's under the properties here. And if I go into navigation, you can actually say uh, corner navigation, which is nice when I point to the upper right corner, show charms. I can actually disable that, which is nice if you want to avoid it altogether. You should be able to. I think when I close it or restart it, it will, will stop from there. So I can also say start screen. When I sign in or close all apps on the screen, go to the desktop instead of the start. Isn't that nice? So Windows 8.1 actually adds these features, which is nice. And then show my desktop background on start is nice too. So when you click on that, it will show your desktop background on the start, which is pretty nice too. You can show the apps automatically when I go into start. Search everywhere instead of just my apps. There's a, so there's a lot of things you can actually add to it to make it easier. So apps view automatically when I go to start. So actually, that's... That's actually really cool, if I think what I think. Oh my god! <laughs> wow, alright. So... <laughs> this is funny. Um, you can really make it work like Windows 7 in some ways by just clicking that. And look, look, you, you, you already have access to your apps app screen when you click on that. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's funny. It's, that's very funny. <laughs> So, if you really want to make it work well, just right-click on Properties and go into Navigation. And when it, you can have it directly go to the Start menu, um, to the desktop background on Start. And you can show the apps for you when you go into Start menu. And I'm sure, hold on, there's something else. List desktop apps first in the apps view also. Um, so start on the display I'm using when I press the Windows logo key. Okay, so that's an option here. So it'll show your desktop apps first, which I, I think is neat. And then to the right, it will show your regular apps. Wow. They've, I haven't actually realized that you could do that. That's quite nice. So I've learned something new today as well as my viewers. So that's pretty cool. Um, so with Windows 8, you can actually make it pretty much act like Windows seven in some ways and you can just go back into the start menu um, here so I mean it, it's quite nice I have to say I'm not disliking Windows 8.1 8, 8 was not that great but 8.1 they've seemed to add some stuff that I really really am into so that's that's quite nice and obviously the fact that it's transparent with your 
your desktop is, is quite enough for me. That They should have done that originally. So I like that a lot, guys. I think that this video has lasted enough time, but I think that we've learned quite a bit in this video on how to make Windows 8.1 easier to navigate and easier to use. So thank you guys again for watching this video, and hopefully you've discovered something I certainly have. So thank you guys very much.